Okay. Um, <coughs> hello, everybody. Particularly Doug. So this is where I'm up to with the uh, the horse. I've actually just literally got this printing. So I spent, um, uh, gosh, at least an hour last night uh, setting up the supports on this. Basically, individually placing the uh, supports where they were needed. Um, oh, hang on, sorry. Let's go back for one sec. Um, so you can see there, that's, this is basically the support placement process, like that. Um, and place those all where they needed to be so that as this prints, I'll sort of simulate printing for you guys that aren't into 3D printing. So the very first bit of the print that's going to get printed is this little bit here. Obviously the very, I'll go back to the very, very start. So it's going to start printing, there's a little base that you won't see from this angle, but it's going to print the supports, then it's going to print the beginning of that part, and they those little supports actually pull the, um, if you imagine this whole thing's going up and down, it's actually upside down to this as well. I wonder if I can rotate this. No, I don't think I can easily rotate it. There we go. Okay. So if you imagine this is actually dipping in and out of the vat, like this, and it's dipping in and each time it, it's actually depositing a little bit of material on here. So um, as it prints, it grows up out of the soup basically like this, but going up and down. It's just that to, for the sake of showing what's actually going on, it sort of grows up out of the soup. So um, if you can imagine that's growing up out of the soup as it goes, we actually, at this point here, this is starting to form a sort of a, cupsion, a suction cup shape around here. So I actually put a hole in, um, in a very convenient location, right where there's a hole on a horse anyway. <laughs> um, so that prevents a uh, suction cup effect, so it lets air into this bowl shaped area here. Um, so to place that, you know, the reason that we have it hollow is because if it's solid resin, A, it uses a lot of material, and B, it can have um, issues curing all the way to the center. So um, it's good to good to hollow things out and um, yeah, just give yourself a little bit more a um, little bit more access to cure things. So I've actually um, put quite a few holes in this. Actually, the other thing is you don't want to trap any uh, metho and resin and stuff in there when you're washing it out. So it's good if you've got enough holes to easily clean it. So in a discreet spot under the belly, I've actually, this is the hole here, I've kept the plug for that large one. The smaller ones I don't bother, but the large one I did. Um, so now what I've done here is a trickily, there was actually some studs on the horse's um, belt, which I didn't model in in the first place because uh, we'd sort of, you know, um, gotten to the point where the level of detail that we'd put in was at the point where we couldn't really spend any more time on it. Um, and so now there's actually some holes lined up with where those rivets would be. So when we paint it, I'll, what I'll actually do is probably just stuff a bit of um, resin in those holes when it's printed, and I'll make a nice little blob that will look like a little bump for the um, for the rivets. So that's actually ticking that box as well. Um, so yeah, that's going to double up as a drain hole and a feature um, on that one. And yeah, so the, the plug will go back in the bottom there and be patched up, but that's going to allow me to fill this up with re uh, metho and wash out the um, resin inside and get it nice and clean so that when it's cured, we don't have any um, uncured resin floating around inside there. Um, so yeah, anyway, it progresses up, and at this point it really doesn't need any support because it's dipping in and out. You imagine this, this is all still dipping in and out of the, the vat. Um and it goes all the way up and you know it's still dipping in and out every dip it it uh it grows a little bit so every time it dips in and out of the vat a different image is displayed on the screen of the printer so yeah, hopefully that's a pretty good representation of how that's sort of happening for you there Doug so it's yeah dipping in and out of a I wonder if I can just simulate it like this. This is kind of what it looks like. It's going did 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 did
Um, and I will just, I'll do what's called slicing. So I've looked at the supports, I'll show you the slice. And you'll sort of get to see what, um, I could have done this actually with the slice showing. So this should come up pretty good, I reckon. Do do do. Sorry, my computer's just having a bit of a struggle with that. So this is sort of going to show you as the as it's building up from the base up, remembering it's going do 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 do. These are the layers that it's actually playing on the screen that's under the vat and those bits of white they're actually burning the resin and cooking it so it sets and well not burning but for want of a better word they're hardening the resin and the uh the black areas are not hardening the resin so the resin's actually everywhere in the vat and the image that's displayed cures it in the areas that it's shining and not where it's not and then basically that's what allows it to build up the layers layer by layer as you see over here you're kind of seeing those two layers there on the two sections, sorry, that's that and that's that. And this um, Mitsubishi symbol looking bit that you're seeing there and the star pentagons and whatever that are going on are actually um, building up these grid layer, grid kind of uh, shapes here. So as that grows, you can kind of see, see it change. There you go. Um, yeah, so, you know, that's kind of the, the price range an object that size, uh, would usually cost. I'm actually looking after Doug because he has spent quite a lot on design here. So I'm, I'm doing this, this whole job at a capped price for him. Um, but yeah, that's the sort of uh, money we're talking for a print that large. That's more or less as big as I could get that horse on the build plate of my printer. Um, I could have turned it, rotated it more vertically and got it if in slightly larger, but that was the size that worked out well for the base that we have. And um, yeah, so there we go. That's um, the horse in the slicer. Now I'm going to show you now because I need to do it anyway. I'm going to start a new project and bring in the. All right, we've already saved the horse, so don't worry. I'm deleting the horse. I'm going to bring in the jockey. We've already got the base printed with FDM printing, um, which I didn't show either, but that was another another probably 20 minutes getting that on the printer. It was a very simple one, that one. Uh, basically just chose some settings and set up the right material in the slicer and loaded the material into the machine and hit go. So here's our jockey. We're just gonna figure out what's gonna be the best orientation to print him. The least support on the least bits possible. The fingers are the most delicate bit that I can think of there. I don't want to print them that way up because they'll suck. You really see his butt. I don't want to try and have him supporting himself by there. I think that something like that is probably not too crazy. Because underneath here, all that that area under his butt. I mean, uh, okay, so we've got the elbow here that's going to be a, a little one that'll need a bit of support as well. Um, so that's kind of unavoidable, that elbow needing support. Under his legs should hold the rest of his body though, and that arm there is obviously going to need support too. So let's go into there, now that I've got that sorted. And start looking at loading in some supports. So I'm going to use these mediums. I've got the I've got my support set up a bit different. My heavies are for really long, hard to reach places. Um, my mediums are more or less a stocky little stumpy one, and then I've got my lights, which are quite fine. 
um, but still quite stocky um, and they can all, all be extended and stuff but that's kind of how I've got the setup for these larger objects that I'm doing it's kind of my chonky support settings it can be a good idea when you're doing supports to um, bring your bring your gear down so that you're actually seeing it only the bit that, that you've got to support first. This bit here holds the weight of the whole model at first. So it actually really likes to have a good bit of support. That's the very foundation of your print. So if there's one spot that you have to sand back, I mean you've got to check and if it's a really delicate spot then you know obviously it's a bit of a tough one where you, you know you might have to actually print it on a different orientation if you have a really delicate feature that's your very first point of contact. Um, but, yeah, just looking at that, that sort of shows um, that that foot there is going to have quite a good little anchor to get started. Um, now, looking at that shape there, I'm looking and I'm thinking that that shape is going to have a lot of leverage. By the time we're printing this bit up here, the suction forces on that are going to be levering at this a lot. So it really needs to have some support along there. Now that's not an actual island. There's nowhere there. What we call an island is where, see that little butt cheek there? It's got a little island and then there's, if I put the mouse there, you can see there's two islands. Now, one of those islands, if we didn't support, if we don't put a support there, right on the tip of that butt cheek and there, None of the butt cheeks going to print until here, where the bum hole is, and it joins. So you've really, you've really got to make sure that each individual piece of island is actually supported. Otherwise, it's not going to print. So I'll just finish up here. So what I'm going to do is, so we've got this island here. I don't think that's an island. That would still print without any support, right? But it is kind of a good spot to bang a support just for a little bit of stability so that it doesn't want to roll sideways. Um, here's another island, look at that. See that little one there? I wonder if that's another cheeky island. No, it's not, but it's also a good opportunity to stick a little stabiliser because it's nice and wide. So it's going to help stabilise it from a width point of view. So not all supports are to um, hold onto an island so that it actually prints. Sometimes you need it to stabilise the shape that you're printing so that you don't have a leverage issue like we're going to have here. So even though they're not islands, and they will print, they're going to have a lot of suction force that could cause a previously printed bit to snap off and then fall down. So I'm just going to go along here. Now this is going to be a little bit annoying with, um, this is the reason for not having much of your um, sort of print exposed at once, because it just lets you see what you're doing a bit better. So I'll just follow along and just try and find the tip of that that shape there. See how I'm sort of following that curve around and finding the very tip of it? It's a good way to make sure that you're putting it in the most um, necessary spot. And you don't have some leading edge that's coming out unsupported while you're supporting an area that doesn't need it. So that's how I'm going to do that. Now, that's a very straight line. So what I might do is I might just pop in just a couple of side supports Actually, what I'll do is I'm just going to go back for those couple there. They don't really all need to be mediums. Some of these can actually be lights. And again, with those very first features, at, very, at the very first instance, they're not taking a lot of weight. So you could have done the very first little tiny bit here with lights. And then as long as you get a couple of mediums or, or heavies on close by while it doesn't have a lot of leverage and suction and force before it gets too big then that's okay so if you had like a really fine feature you could <coughs> could get away with doing that fine feature with small supports and then joining onto a larger support further up the model if that makes sense so uh, let's go back to our mediums for this bit and I'm just going to work backwards for this and I might even just stagger these as I go just a little bit so that we get a little bit more width in our um, thing from the, from the get-go. And it also helps if you just, if you spot an island while you're doing your little scan through doing this. It certainly doesn't hurt to just dart over and pop one on it just in case you forget it later. 
But then again, maybe it does hurt because it might distract you. I don't know. Depends on how you operate. Alright, so that's enough of those. I'm just going to work in a couple of lights. Just to help with that overhanging bit there. Remembering these feet here are going to be taking a lot of leverage for further up the model. And as for the bottom of the feet here, they're a very easy spot to clean up. So I'm actually going to grab... I'll just use mediums, they're strong enough. I'm just going to pepper the bloody daylights out of the bottom of that there. With those, just to grab on to the bottom of those feet really well. So we've got a really good strong anchorage for this piece. No one's going to see the inside of the feet either, so we can really bang in a couple more there. I mean, I know for a fact this area around these balls is going to be put inside a socket, so there's plenty of, you know, plenty of goods to put on there. All right, so now we'll move over to his butt. So we've still got the mediums. Now his butt's going to be seen, but it's very easy to sand a butt, so I don't really mind using these um, larger supports there. And again, this is going to be taking quite a lot of load, so quite happy to put a fair few of those along there. Really comes around to that blue area, it really doesn't need a lot, but I'm just going to bang in a couple of lights. Again, just because this is the foundation that's really going to be carrying a lot of a lot of the rest of it. Pepper his ass, I suppose. Right, so that's... That's those sort of I major islands, I guess I would call those, fully supported. So they've got some minor islands within them, but um, we'll call those major islands. Our way up. Let's have a little bit of a look at the joins there. And what we can do is actually bring this bottom and chase it up as well to kind of um, just to indicate, I guess, like it just helps you see a little bit better. And this helps, helps you indicate where you actually need to put them and where you've already done. Um, probably pretty happy with some lights under here, really. Plenty of them. With these areas here, they when it's um, quite quite horizontal, the the angle is quite horizontal. There's not a lot of weight on there, but there is a very thin edge that doesn't stay very well supported by itself. So it does definitely pay to give those bits, especially that very leading edge. And if you get the leading edge to peel off with it, it starts to stiffen up fairly quickly. If the leading edge is flapping, it can be pretty problematic. Right, now that shape, once that's joined, that's now very, very sturdy. It's got a very wide base. There should really be no issues with that anymore as far as overall stability goes. 
let's just look at that whole base. So we're quite happy with that now. I don't think anything much else on those boots or legs needs any support at all. This bit here would benefit from some assistance on that very leading edge. Now, in this case, I'm going to use heavies because they just reach further and get the stick further away from my job. And at this point, I'm going to save it. Okay, save that, because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in and do some editing, and when you're editing supports, they can tend to crash. So, I'm going to go E for edit, and I'm going to just drag some supports around the place a little bit. The reason being, is because we don't want to have hundreds of stalks everywhere. So, these ones here are going to be kind of major support structures. I'm going to use that one for two different spots. Gotta take this call, hold on. Alrighty, um, I have to wrap this up because I have to go and pick my kids up from school. Um, but that's basically what goes into this process. Sometimes you can get an awful lot done with just one support, but then that support will often need to be supported itself. See if we can't just join all them onto there and then find a spot to put this stick where it'll be happy. Let's dodge that knee. That can work, I reckon. Probably want to come across this way a little bit so that they're a little bit more even in length. It's probably a good idea, I even though I hate doing this, putting in a really solid thing like that. That 
That'll just make sure. Well, we can seem to get a few lights in there. And I'll have a more solid strength profile as well. These ones can tend to be a little bit um, wobbly, so it's definitely good if you can to um, just pop in a few uh, support supports where possible. And that looked like it went a little bit close to that, so I'm just going to pull it that way. Now its design there is to actually support that support a bit as well. Um, even though it does shoot across to there, it probably actually should just grab that and just go to... Actually, I'm going to keep them separate anyway. I'll just stick it to the leg there. Give everything a little bit of stability. Let me move that in to there. And that can come up. I'll just scan through that now and just make sure that nothing's in the way of anything. Yeah, that's good. That cluster doesn't touch anything. It comes up, they come up. That gets that more or less started at the very first instance of its existence. Let me just click through those frame by frame. Yeah, that's captured more or less by that one there in the first instance. Yep, it is. It's captured. The very first instance where we see a, a piece, it's there. We get a fair bit, a fair bit of flappage there, but it's one layer. Then it's captured, so that's pretty good. And then captured by them. So by the time it's anything big, it's actually quite well supported. Um, these ones here have like a string-like function. They're not rigid like a, a stick, but they do pull like a string, and they do actually surprisingly a good job of um, peeling things off the the job. As long as they're well balanced, uh, that's why it's kind of important to get that somewhere in the centre and have that stick well supported so that it doesn't want to flex around the place um, itself. So that's pretty good, I'm pretty happy with that. Now we can whack in a little column of supports up the guts there. And look, I've, I'm going to have to save this and complete this later because I do want to put in a few more under that elbow and stuff and yeah, I don't have time for that now. Before I say, go and pick the kids up. So I'm going to save that. It's going to ask if I want to save over the other one. I'm going to say yes because I'm happy with it. And it didn't crash. So I'm going to leave that and I'm going to end the stream. And